What up y'all, BCB here. This episode I'm going to be talking a little bit more about AkaR and Jeff Minter and the history there uh, with this company Llamasoft and Atari. Uh, so stay tuned. Welcome back, guys. So it's no surprise by now, Atari is actually planning um, a reimagined version of Aka R with Jeff Mentor. Um, in this episode, I'm going to be going over a little bit about who he is, uh, what Llamasoft is, and what they've done for Atari in the past. It's quite significant. <laughs> So I'm pulling some of this information from Wikipedia here. Um, it says here, uh, Jeff Mentor is an English video game designer and programmer who often goes by the name Yak. He is the founder of software house Llamasoft and has created dozens of games during his career, which began in 1981 with games for the ZX80. Mentor's games are shoot 'em ups which contain titular or in-game references, demonstrating his fondness of ruminants llamas, sheep, camels, etc. Many of his programs also feature something of a psychedelic element, as in some of his earliest light synthesizer programs, including Tripatron. I actually have one of these programs for my Atari 800 computer on disk, and it's just basically kind of like the iTunes visualizer type stuff, just kind of visuals, and really neat. I love it. Mentor's works include the music visualization game, Neon, which is built into the Xbox 360 console, and the video games Grid Runner, Attack of the Mutant Camels, Tempest 2000, and Polybius. So uh, Jeff Mentor's career, his pre-commercial career, early years, uh, Mentor had expressed an interest in programming computers from a young age. He wrote the game Deflex for the Commodore PET in 1979. However, it would, it would not be long until illness during the school year that Mentor's talents would develop in any meaningful way. Following a three-month stint in which Mentor was restricted to lying on his back and was confined to his bed between November 1981 and January 82. Boredom led him to take up computer programming in earnest to pass the time. Upon recovery, Mentor learned, uh, Mentor teamed up with Richard Jones, a fellow pupil, and together they started writing their own games on their school's Commodore PET. They soon parted ways. Jones went on to commercial projects, some of them in the software market. In 1981, Mentor started independently writing and selling video games for the ZX80, the first machine he owned. Some were made for software company DKtronics. These titles were sold as a package, but this was not available for very long. 
as Minter left the company following a royalties dispute. He formed a partnership with his mother, Hazel Minter. Together, they developed and commercially produced 20 games for the ZX81, VIC-20, Atari 8-Bit Family, ZX, Spectrum, and Commodore 64. Having been studying physics at the University of East Anglia, success in the programming industry prompted him to drop his studies and take up video game development full-time. I was so into computing that I really, really, really wanted a computer of my own. But I mean, back then, it was super expensive, that was the trouble. I mean, even the CompuKit UK 101 was like 250 quid. The, Comm the Commodore PET, which I learned on in school, was, was uh, I think about 800 quid. And for a school kid, it's just like, no way. But then, a miracle happened. This guy came into my life. Look at his smiling face. <laughs> and brought out the Sinclair ZX80. This is just towards the end of my sixth form time, and I, I got a job after school. Um, I was cleaning uh, offices and toilets and saving up. And I managed to order a 1K ZX80 in the spring of 1979. And at the end of my school days, in summer of 1979 or so, I received two things in the post on the same day. One of them would have a, quite an effect on my future career. I got my exam results, and it wasn't them. <laughs> it was this. Oh, I loved that little thing. I loved it so much. And the rest of that summer, I bought a knackered old telly off a, a, a granny in Reading for a fiver. I, mean, it, it was, I think it was still dual standard, like 405, 9 and 625, and full of valves to go just to warm up, but you could just about display the ZX80 on it. I spent every waking moment programming on that thing. I and mean, even though you only had 1K, it was like you could still, it was your own computer that you could program at home. Nobody could kick you off after half an hour. I expanded it to 4K, one 2114 at a time, because that's all I could afford. <laughs> that's half a K at a time. Uh, I even sub submitted a program to uh, Practical Computing Magazine, and they actually published it. There it is, with uh, my name on it. And as a result of that, I got the first money I ever earned in, in computing. They paid me five quid for the publication of that, uh, of that program. And I, I, I found the receipt the other, the other day. I was going through some stuff and I found I still had the receipt for it. Well, after that, I went on to university and unfortunately for me, this was a short chapter. The following year, he founded the software house, Llamasoft. His first Llamasoft game was a Defender clone for the VIC-20 called Andy's Attack. In the US, this was called Aggressor. In Andy's attack, Little Llamas advanced upon and attacked the player instead of the spaceships from Defender. As a fan of Defender, Mentor would remake it again as Defender 2000. Through the Brighton-based software house, Salamander Software, Mentor had his games written for the Spectrum and other home microcomputers. It was Mr. S. A. Tenquist who was responsible for the Sinclair ZX Spectrum 16K version of Grid Runner. The conversion was released and published for Christmas 1983 by Quicksilva Limited UK.
Jeff Minter's original Commodore version was written in a week and marked his first commercial success both in the UK and the US. Metro went on to develop a number of games for the Commodore 64, Atari 8-Bit Family, and Atari ST, which were marketed by word of mouth and magazine advertisements. These included Grid Runner, Abductor, Matrix, Grid Runner 2, Hellgate, Hover Bover, Attack of the Mutant Camels, Re Re uh, Revenge of the Mutant Camels, Return of the Mutant Camels, Laser Zone, Mama Llama, Metagalactic Llama's Battle at the Edge of Time, Sheep in Space, Void Runner, and Iridus Alpha. His post 8 bit work it says here In 1989, Mentor helped in the production of the Conix Multi System Console. Mentor worked for Atari and VM Labs. For Atari, he produced Tempest 2000 in 1994 on the Jaguar. It was a remake of Dave Thurr's 1981 Tempest. Do I think? I don't know. What's the use of even trying? You can't get a break. New Tempest 2000. What's that? Only on the Jaguar 64 bit by a time. Do the math. He followed it with Defender 2095 on the Jaguar, a remake of the 1981 arcade game. Listing Mentor and their 75 most important people in the games industry of 95, Next Generation called him the Jaguar's leading developer. Mentor also produced the virtual light machine for the Jaguar CD add-on, the VLM-1. For VM Labs, he created the VLM-2 and Tempest 3000. Mentor then wrote games for the Pocket PC platform, some of which also have Windows conversions. Deflex, Hover Bover 2, Grand Theft Flymo, a reinterpretation of his own 1984 game Hover Bover, and Grid Runner Plus Plus.
Off my garden, you idiot! You furry tidy. Oi, come back here with my mower. Come and have a look, a sheepy. Yeah, that's disgusting. Come on then, doggy. Go on, dog. Fetch. <coughs> Look, a sheepy. <coughs> Ow, you bastard. <coughs> Bollocks, a mole. In 2002, he began work on a music video game for the GameCube to be called Unity. Using the newest version of his VLM, the VLM3 or Neon, Unity was to combine the two main threads of Mentor's prior career, light synthesis and classic arcade-style shooting. Mentor was involved in writing this game for Lionhead Studios throughout 2003. The project was canceled in December 2004. Neon has since been reprogrammed and significantly expanded and is used in Xbox 360 media visualization. In 2007, Mentor released Space Giraffe, an action video game with similarities to Tempest. Space Giraffe was released for Xbox 360 through Xbox Live Arcade. In 2008, it was announced at the Tokyo Game Show that designers at Lombasoft are working on the visualization and aspects of the Xbox 360 version of Space Invaders Extreme. The game was released in 2008. <laughs> Round completed. In December 2008, Space Giraffe was, was released for Windows. In September 2009, he released Grid Runner Revolution for Windows as a digital download. If you've ever played a Commodore 64 in the 80s, you'll have no doubt heard of Llamasoft, a developer that brought gamers the likes of Trax, Hover Bother, and the surreal shooter Attack of the Mutant Camels. Headed up by the now legendary Jeff Minter, Llamasoft is looking back at one of its all-time classic games, Grid Runner, and updating it with high-res psychedelic graphics, retro sound effects, and a whole host of sheep. The result is a game that is completely and utterly bonkers. 
but that still retains some of the extremely addictive arcade gameplay that made the original so great. Grid Runner Revolution is a sequel to Grid Runner Plus Plus, which eschewed the strict grid-based gameplay of the original in favour of a free-roaming ship. The premise of the game is simple, shoot everything in sight and avoid enemy fire. Though the premise of the game is simple, Grid Runner adds a number of features that greatly enhance the gameplay. The game is controlled with the mouse or keyboard, but ultimately the mouse allows for quicker movements. Moving the mouse moves your ship, while clicking the left and right buttons rotates it. The mouse wheel is used to select different ship types, some fire forwards, others sideways, allowing for different types of attacking strategy. There's no need to worry about a fire button as the ship is constantly spouting forth a stream of triangular bullets. This makes it easy to concentrate on taking down enemies and navigating. The enemies come in a variety of geometric shapes and colours and are procedurally generated. The Minotaur Project in 2010, frustrated with the delays surrounding the release of his titles, Mentor was keen to return to a style of game development where games could be produced and released quickly. The iOS platform was chosen and Llamasoft announced that a series of games would be produced under the banner of the Minotaur Project. The idea behind the series is that Llamasoft would develop a game in the style of a past computer or console, but without the constraints of the original hardware. On 5th January 2011, he released Minotaur Rescue for iPhone 3GS, iPhone 4, iPod Touch 3rd Generation, iPod Touch 4th Generation, and iPad. On March 2nd, Llamasoft released their second iOS game, Minotron 2112. Minotron 2112 is a remake of the Atari SD Amiga game Llamatron, which was inspired by the coin-op video game Robotron 2084. This version of Deflex was also released, although this was not specifically labeled as being part of the Minotaur project. On September 17, Llamasoft released Goat Up, their first platform game. Or as some people might say, Goat Up! Anyway, January 27, 2012, Caverns of Minos was released, following on 24th March by Grid Runner iOS. Super Ox Wars, a shoot 'em up based on Ikaruga, was released in July 2012. The final game in the series, Goat Up 2, was released on March 23, unique in that it is the only Llamasoft title to feature a level editor. Or as some people might say, Goat Up 2! Mentor then announced his iteration to abandon mobile development due to lack of discoverability, low turnover, and the dominance of free-to-play and video game clones. He ultimately declared that, after accounting for his time, the Minotaur project was a net loss. And then I spent two years trying, bashing my head against the wall, doing iOS games, um, which I really enjoyed. I mean, iOS is tremendous fun to code on, it's uh, very capable hardware. Um, these were fun little projects, you know, so I spent like a month here and two months there and made lots of fun little games. I'd never made a platform game in my life before I, I did iOS and so I did, I did all kinds of different stuff. And I really enjoyed myself, but unfortunately it just didn't make any bloody money. You know, short, small projects, fun to do, but, so you might as well play the lottery with iOS a lot of the time. Terrible visibility unless you're in the top 10 and the people who are in the, who are in the top 10 already are fighting tooth and nail to stay there and spending lots of money to stay there. 
good. I mean, all, all my games got fantastic reviews, all the user reviews were fantastic, but didn't make any difference. People expect support forever. I still get moaned at for the fact that I'm, I'm, I'm not maintaining this game that somebody bought sort of five years ago for 69p. And these days, people expect games for free anyway. Anyway, so I moved on from there, and then Sony came to the rescue, and wanted, they wanted more games for the Vita. And they started encouraging indies to come onto their platforms and uh, invite us to make a game, and we made TXK. Because I, I thought it would be nice to revisit Tempest 2000. If, I, if people like that game, but when I look at it, I see all the flaws, I see the low frame rate, I see the low resolution and how it doesn't really look like a vector game. And on the Vita, with that beautiful OLED screen it had, you could make a really beautiful version. So I made TXK, which did pretty well on the Vita, actually. Mentor stated on Twitter that returning to iOS would be like returning to the scene of a mugging. And I would advise any dev valuing integrity and sanity to just get the hell out. As a result, the Minotaur Project games were not updated for 64-bit versions of iOS and were removed from the App Store while existing copies became unplayable on updated devices. The code framework for the Minotaur Project games enables them to be rebuilt for both Mac and PC versions. Grid Runner was released for the Mac in August 2012. Return to Console Games in April 2013, it was announced that LamaSoft had signed a deal with Sony Computer Entertainment to create a tube shooter for the PlayStation Vita called TXK. The game would be LamaSoft's fourth tube shooter in two decades and was described as the spiritual successor of 1994's Tempest 2000 for the Atari Jaguar. As Mentor explained in his development blog, the project goals were to create a more traditional, straightforward, and accessible tube shooter than Space Giraffe, to improve on, on the flaws from Tempest 2000 and Tempest 3000, and to evoke the neo-retro aesthetic without being cheesy. TXK was released on February 11, 2014 by digital download through PSN. There were flaws in Tempest 2000, that's news to me, love that game. At the beginning of 2015, Mentor was threatened with legal action by Atari, claiming that TKX was too similar to Tempest 2000, a game that Mentor himself wrote, but Atari owned the rights to. This raised several issues, including Atari claiming that Mentor had illegally copied material from his own source code and violated design copyrights on his own design traditions. Sony was unwilling to support Mentor, and as such future versions of TXK were blocked from release, although the PS Vita version remains available. Mentor and Zorkin's first publicly available game for a modern home console, Polybius, was released on the PlayStation 4 on May 9, 2017. The game features extensive support for the PlayStation VR headset, based on Mentor's experience building the unreleased VR version of TXK. Shortly after release, Llamasoft were contracted by Trent Reznor of the band Nine Inch Nails, 
asking to use visuals from Polybius as the basis for the music video for the song Less Than. The video was released on July 13th the same year. August 2017, Atari SA issued a press release announcing a partnership with Lamasoft to develop Tempest 4000 on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One video game consoles and Windows-based personal computers. Quiet. It was released in July 2018. That's a fantastic version of Tempest, by the way. I love it. In March 2018, Mentor announced that the framework for the Monitor project had also been ported to the PlayStation 4 and started an intention to release enhanced versions of the Monitor project games as console games and bundles under the name Monitor Arcade. In December 2018, Llamasoft released Monitor Arcade Volume 1 on Steam. This contained much enhanced versions of Goat Up and Grid Runner with support for playing on the Oculus Rift, but also playable in 2D. A PlayStation 4 version of Minotaur Arcade Volume 1 was released in October 2019. Mentor vis revisited the enhanced Minotaur arcade framework to produce an original game, Moose Life, released on Steam in August 2020, and on PlayStation 4 in February 2021. December 2022, Mentor announced that he had been contracted to produce a complete and up-to-date version of their abandoned 1982 prototype arcade machine, Aka R, the original version of which had become available to the wider public as part of the recently published collection, Atari 50, the anniversary celebration. <laughs>
It also says here, a mentor appeared in the interactive film Black Mirror, Bandersnatch, released in December 2018. The film was based around the 1980s video game industry in the United Kingdom. Mentor played Jerome F. Davies, the author of the titular Bandersnatch novel, who murdered his wife. I keep having these vivid dreams, like thinking weird things. What sorts of things? We're going to be a hit factory, like Motel, but for computer games. You heard it here first. Bandersnatch. It's an adventure game based on the book. Jerome F. Davies was a genius. See that bloke who went cuckoo and cut his wife's head off? When it's a concert piece, a bit of madness is what you need. Voices, or... voices, but there is something. That dismatch was the final straw. It lets you see the bigger picture. Stefan, you're worrying me. Relax, you stepping out of this. Hey, Stefan. Your fate has been dictated. You're not in control. Mentor also contributed to the documentary film, From Bedrooms to Billions. Mentor appears extremely briefly as a background character in Ashens and the Polybius Heist. And uh, it says here, personal life, um, in forums he's known by um, Yak. Um, it says here, that means, uh, in his own words, a pseudonym chosen a long time ago, back in the days when high score tables on coin op machines only held three letters, and I settled on Yak, because the Yak is a scruffy, hairy beast, a lot like me. Smiley face. But yeah, it's enough Tempest. I'm, I'm done with Tempest after this. It's been quite a journey. I mean, from it's like you know, going from the ZX80 to the to the PS3. I was like going from an ox cart to the Starship Enterprise, and, and it feels really weird to actually encompass all that in 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 one career in one head. <laughs> it's not over yet. Still carrying on. Still very much enjoying the journey. I'm going to carry on until they plant me. I think. And yeah, I have a few words of advice for people just starting out on their own. Just, just study game history. You've got a fantastic resource in, in emulation. You've got MAME, you've got stuff like Gamebase. Consider that your library. Go through those things, look at, you know, study the classics, try and understand what makes them so good. Uh, study the ones in particular which are still good to this day. And there are a few of them around. Study Robotron. Robotron is just fantastic. Since 2015, Mentor has used the name Yak relatively rarely, usually signing as Stinky Ox or Jeff Minotaur. <coughs> he lives in Wales with his partner Ivan Giles Zorzen, four sheep, two goats, two llamas, and a dog. <coughs> Although Mentor is synonymous with Llamasoft, Zorkin is jointly responsible for the recent titles. Mentor likes Indian food, particularly chicken vindaloo. Sheep are his favorite animal. He has kept them as pets for many years. <coughs> And guys, the list of games here that he's responsible for is incredible. It goes on and on. It's like 40 so games here or more. I, I'm going to put them on the screen. Um, just amazing. Um, he's worked on every generation of games pretty much. Well, second and third generation, fourth, fifth, sixth, the Minotaur Project, and eighth generation games. With Moose Life here being the latest listed. So let me know, you guys, what you think about Jeff Mentor and Llamasoft. Definitely a great company. I love... Uh, Tempest 2000 on the Jaguar. I'm playing it back here. Um, it's a fantastic game. 
Also, uh, Tempest 4000 for the Xbox is just, it's my favorite version of this game. It's got um, extra power-up screens, the graphics are a little better, the, the sound is better in some degree. Um, it's just great. Um, it's also on the Atari VCS. Um, it's one of my favorite titles. It was in my top three on Yorkie's TV's uh, breakdown of that when he interviewed me and some other YouTubers. Um, so, uh, fantastic. So, I'm really looking forward to Aka R uh, Recharged or Reimagined. We're not sure what the name is going to be right now. I'm going to show some screenshots here, some, some clips of interviews with him and some other stuff throughout. Um, so, let me know what you think about... Um, Lamasoft and Jeff Mentor. Definitely a huge piece of Atari history. Um, I wanted to preface also and say I was reading from Wikipedia, so not my own facts, but um, the community's facts, as it were. Um, so, uh, but yeah, let me know down below what you think. I'm excited about Arca R Reimagine or Recharge. It looks great from what Atari's tea so far. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Let me know down below, as I said. Subscribe, like, and comment. And thank you so much for watching that Atari show and Atari Newsline Newsflash. Have a good one, guys. Bye. Yeah, exactly. That's just what I'm saying. Yeah, and consider making a clone. I mean, yeah, look at a, a great classic, which is you know, brilliant, and, and try and implement your own version of it. Maybe extend it a little way. I mean, help yourself to the ideas that are in these things. This is stuff which is all there to be, to be plundered. And so this, the stuff you learn from those old games will still apply in many ways to modern game design, so it's well worth doing. So guys, just real quick, I found out something interesting when I was researching all this material for Jeff Mentor. Um, I came across an article online talking about Tetrisphere, the Nintendo 64 game, which I actually... That was my first game I bought for the N64, I believe, back in 97 or so. And I played the hell out of it in my dorm room at West Texas A&M University, my second time in college. But um, uh, yeah, it's um, one of my favorite games, actually. A lot of people, I don't hear a lot of praise for it, but it's great. You're basically trying to um, unleash this object or creature inside of this planet or orb, and you're dropping blocks to release it. And um, it's just such a great game. That was actually, I found out online, that game was actually meant to be the sequel to Tempest 2000 called Fear, P-H-E-A-R. And it was sold to Nintendo, I guess, the rights. So that's kind of where that game comes from. I don't know if Jeff had a hand in that, if that was his code or if it was based on his stuff. Anyway, at the very least, it's based on his work and I can definitely see why. I mean, it's such a great game to me. Um, and yeah, I I didn't realize I had that game in my life way back then. That was a, kind of a Jeff Mentor game or made in the style of one of his games anyway. And just, just amazing to find that out. Just wanted to add that in here. What up y'all, BCB again. Just wanted to say uh, really quickly, after doing all the research for this Jeff Mentor piece, um, just off the books uh well hopefully he'll see this if he watches it one day but um i just want to say jeff if you're watching um and just to all you watching um what an amazing guy uh he's done so much for not just atari but video game video games in general the whole industry um he's made games for the ps vita for the iphone for ps4 for for everything for the commodore for spectrum and atari apic computers i mean he just goes on and on PCs, um, but uh, what an amazing guy! He, I'm just, I'm just so overwhelmed. All of Jeff's games are the games that I like, like those arcade shoot 'em ups for the most part. And um, I actually do have something called Color Space or some kind of a disc that looks very much like that visual um, stuff that Jeff worked on in the early days. That might even be one of his games. I think it is. But um, it's, uh, yeah, just, just a cool guy. Um, he's kind of littered across, in a good way, he's kind of sprinkled across the video game industry. And um, I just love his work. Um, so by any chance, if Jeff ever sees us one day, I just want you to know, man, that um, I think you're an incredible dev, great guy. You like sheep, that's cool. You like llamas, I love it. And um, yeah, I'm excited to see what's gonna come next with Aka R. 
and um, yeah, the reimagining of that game. It's just, I just can't wait. So again, let me know down below what you think, guys. Um, Jeff Mentor, just a genius, I think. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. And uh, go play some Atari. Maybe even some Tempest 2000 on your Jaguar. All right. Have a good one, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Atari. The name has become synonymous with electronic entertainment. In just 10 years, Atari has grown to become a leader in the coin-operated and home video game industry. And now your chance has come to join this tremendous growth and to discover the latest revolution in electronic technology. Atari is bringing the computer age home, and you're part of the team. Meet the Atari 400 and 800 home computers. First, let's look at the Atari 400. It's practical, exciting, and easy to use. Look up there. A computer designed for the whole family. Oh, Jake! Oh, Mom! The Atari 400 is almost kid-proof. Have you played Atari today?